What's up everyone, John Turman here, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to play every single note on the French horn. In this video, you will see the note names here, the way the note looks in the staff just above, and then I'll include valve combinations over here. In the description below, I have all the notes with a number next to them. The higher the number, the higher the octave. The lower the number, the lower the octave. And for reference, C4 is this C right below the staff, otherwise known as middle C. Now you'll hear me say the words F side and B flat side today. And if you're just starting, you might not have a horn that looks exactly like this. You might have a horn that only has one set of these slides, the ones in front, or the shape of the ones in the back. The ones in the front are a little longer, and they're called the F slides, or the F side. And then the ones in the back, you know, on my horn, those are the B flat slides. And I'll say B flat side or F side. And when I say B flat side, I'm going to put down this mechanism right here. You can see the trigger. I'm gonna depress that, and that's gonna allow me to switch between the F and the B flat sides. Here in America, we are playing standing in F, but in most European countries and some Asian countries, it's common to play standing in the key of B flat. When I say vowel combinations, I'm going to be going in numerical order, starting with the vowel that is closest to your face. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. When I say B flat side, that means put down your trigger. All right, here we go. Starting with C, just below the staff. It's open on the F side. And on the B flat side, it's also open. All right, now we're gonna go chromatically up one note at a time. The next note is C sharp. On the F side, that's one and two. On the B flat side, that's two and three. D on the F side is one. On the B flat side, one and two. E flat on the F side, second valve. On the B flat side, one. E natural, open on the F side. On the B flat side, two. F on the F side is one. On the B flat side, open. F sharp on the F side, second valve. On the B flat side, First and second. And a quick tip. Anytime you play using the valve combination one and two, you can also optionally play that third valve, depending on what you need for smoothness or intonation. F sharp could also be played third on the B flat side. G, open. On the B flat side, one. It's nice and low if you need that for intonation's sake. A flat on the B flat side, which is the one that I like to use in this register starting on this note, it's gonna be two and three. And on the F side, two, three as well. Quick tip on emptying your water. Hold the third valve slide down and throw down the trigger and wiggle your first two fingers. Shake the horn gently while holding it at this angle. So all the water from these slides drips down and gets collected right here. Then holding third valve down, turn your horn and put it on your left knee. Then keeping that third valve down, pull out the F slide, then throw down trigger and pull out the B flat slide and then dump them like this 
and you will clear out all of the water in all of your slides at once. This is so that you don't end up dumping out every single slide and you just empty out these two. And for additional clearing, make sure you do that same motion again, wiggle, and then hold the valve down and dump. Now we put the slides back in, hold trigger three while you put in the B flat side, and then release the trigger and hold three while you put in the F slide. Where were we? A, on the B flat side, one and two. On the F side, it's also one and two. You could also play it open on the B flat side. B flat. On the B flat side, it's gonna be one. And also on the F side, it's gonna be one. B natural. Second valve on the B flat side. On the F side, it's also second valve. C. Open and also open on the F side. C sharp. Two, three on the B flat side. On the F side, one and two. D. One and two on the B flat side. One on the F side. E flat or D sharp. First valve on the B flat side. Second valve on the F side. E natural. Second valve on the B flat side. Open on the F side. F. Open on the B flat side. One on the F side. It's nice and high. And in this range, I tend to eliminate use of the F side altogether because the combinations are pretty much the same and they're just a lot riskier. You're more likely to miss notes in this register, but you could get a nice brassy sound by using the F side. From here on up, I'm just gonna be using B flat side fingers. Here are a few tips for playing in the high register on horn. Make sure you take a full belly breath, really fuel that sound with the biggest breath you can imagine. It's okay to let the shoulders rise just a little bit. We're really trying to fill up here when we play in the low register and the tongue should be really flat and everything should be nice and tall and open. Oh, and low, our valve shape low. When we're in the high register, our valve shape changes to be a little bit more like the letter E, 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 and see my tongue, my tongue placements even higher in my mouth, and that allows air to shoot over that tongue with even greater speed as it leaves my mouth. If you'd like additional help improving your high register, I'll put a few exercises in a video here eventually, and for additional help, download my E warm-up book, and I'll put the link here and in my description. F sharp, second vowel on the B side, G, open, G sharp, or A flat, second valve on the B flat side, or second and third. Second and third is a little more in tune, second valve is a little flat, but it's a little more accurate because it's less tubing that you have to blow through. A, open, or one and two on the B flat side. You can hear the difference in pitch between those two. One and two on the B flat side is gonna be a little more in tune, but open on the B flat side is going to be easier to hit. B flat, A sharp. First valve on the B flat side. B natural, second valve on the B flat side. C, open on the B flat side. This is where things get a little wonky. You can hit a lot of different notes using the same valve combinations because the partials up here are so close together. C sharp. I find that C sharp speaks pretty clearly when you use one and two on the B flat side. D, one on the B flat side. 
D sharp slash E flat. Second valve. This is as high as I'm going to go today, the E natural. You can use almost any valve combination for E natural because all the partials are infinitely more close up here. I find that second valve on the B flat side actually works pretty well on this note as well. Now that we've gone into the high register, let's get low. B natural, second valve on the F side and second valve on the B side. You'll hear me change my terminology from B to B flat side when I say which side the notes are on. That's because in German, B actually means B flat and H actually means B natural. B flat or A sharp, one on the F side and one on the B flat side. A, one and two on the F side, or one and two on the B flat side. You can also use three for both those. Okay, here we go. A flat, second and third on the F side. Or second and third on the B flat side. A few quick tips on playing in the low register. Now, when you're playing in this register on the B flat side, it's important to keep your vowel shape inside your mouth really nice and tall, not closed down like that, or else you'll get a really oinky sound. It's not very good. You hear that? That's because my mouth is very closed. I was right like this. Ugh. And keeping that tall, O open vowel shape is key to sounding really pretty in this register. When I go into the low register, my embouchure shifts a little bit. This is really common with bass trombone players as well. You'll see them like shift four times across the registers. And it's necessary for us because the horn plays so many different octaves. When playing in the low register, my bottom lip will leave the bottom of the mouthpiece ever so slightly and I'll push my jaw forward slightly. This allows me to have my lips nice and relaxed and gives me stability in this register. So you may notice that we are starting to use a ton of ledger lines on the bottom and it's getting a little bit tricky to read. So I invite you to learn about the bass clef. If you haven't seen the bass clef before, the two dots surround the note F in the staff. In treble clef, this would be a D, but in bass clef, it's an F. So I think two notes up, which would be an F in treble clef, and then two octaves down. So this note is that F for us on the horn. Now for some reason, composers like Shostakovich, Strauss, and Stravinsky, when they would write bass clef for horn, they actually meant it an octave higher than it's written, and they have all these ledger lines below the bass clef staff. How wacky is that? So just keep that in mind when you're reading those composers' works. And that's known as old bass clef notation. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be speaking in modern bass clef notation, and it's just as I explained. All right, now on to G. I always like to play G on the F side, in just a nice open. And if you absolutely must, you can play one and three on the B flat side. It's a little high, but F sharp. I also like to play this note on the F side pretty exclusively. Second valve. You can also play this one, two, and three on the B flat side, but I don't like to use that combination. Really unstable and sharp. F. This is where I like to switch to the B-flat side pretty consistently, and just open on the B-flat side. Or one on the F side. E natural, second valve on the B-flat side. One and two on the F side. E-flat, one on the B-flat side. Or, second and third on the F side. 
D. One and two on the B flat side. Or one and three on the F side. You'll notice that the lower we get into the F side, the more out of tune and unstable these notes become, and that's why I prefer using the B flat side down here. D flat, C sharp, on the B flat side, two, three. Or one, two, three on the F side. And keep in mind, wherever your pitch happens to be, you can always manipulate it by moving your hand ever so slightly in to cover down, or open up to make the note slightly higher. As we move into this lower register, you'll notice that my jaw placement is different. It's a little bit more out, a little bit more down, aw. And that mouth shape remains very, very tall so that we get that nice, rich sound in this register. C on the F side is open. And on the B flat side, one and three. B natural, second vowel on the F side. Or one, two, three on the B flat side. It's pretty sharp though, <laughs> don't use that one. And for the next few notes, we're just going to be using the F side because there aren't any combinations that work naturally on the B flat side. B flat, first valve on the F side. A, one and two. A flat, two and three. Low G, one and three on the F side. G flat or F sharp, one, two and three. F, open on the B-flat side. E natural, second valve on the B-flat side. E flat, first valve on the B-flat side. D, one and two on the B-flat side. D flat, two and three on the B-flat side. And finally, C. I like to play this on the B-flat side, trigger one and three, but a lot of people that are more proficient at this register than I prefer to play it on the F side, which is open. All right, thank you all for sticking to the end of this video. Now I have a special little bonus for you, a quick little stopped horn tutorial. Sometimes you'll see a plus sign above or below a note. This means the composer wants you to play stopped horn. Stopped horn is where you take your hand and seal off the bell and it gets a sound like this. Now a quick trick for playing stopped horn is to play the note printed a half step lower on the F side. Those are the valve combinations that are most in tune. For instance, this G in the staff here on stopped horn would be second valve. Your hand closes on itself like this, and then you press into that bell and make sure that no air can escape. You can also use a special piece of equipment called a stopped mute, and that is particularly useful when you have to play very loud or present, or in the low register, where the notes are a little more unstable on stop horn with your hand. However, in the high register, let's take another example. So F on the top of the staff, a uh, half step below that is E, and on the F side, that's open. Nice and in tune. Now if I were to play that on the B flat side, it's gonna be a little sharp. You hear that difference? And that's why it's important to know your F horn fingers throughout the entire range of the horn. Ultra bonus bonus at the end of the video, we're gonna talk quickly about echo horn. Echo horn is a technique used by certain French composers and some modern composers like Elliot Carter in his horn concerto, but particularly Paul Ducat in uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice and also his Villanelle which is a great solo piece. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely work on that. It is so much fun. But uh, instead of stopping the note completely and cutting off all air from escaping the horn, when we play echo horn, or sometimes it's labeled son d'eque, you take your stopped hand position and pull the fingers out slightly like that. And it gets a more ghostly and beautiful soft sound versus that nasal, brassy, fully stopped sound. Finger combinations when we're playing echo horn 
are slightly different. They are a half step higher and you can use B flat or F side and I like to play on the B flat side for solidity's sake generally when playing echo horn. Let's take the note G in the staff again. Stopped horn would be second valve. Now echo horn, we take our hand position, pull those fingers out ever so slightly, and our valve combination is going to be for the note a half step higher, which is A flat. So I'm going to use two and three on the B flat side. And it's also a matter of playing with that hand position to get it really in tune. I will sometimes spread my fingers apart just ever so slightly when playing echo horn, or I'll keep them all together and pull them out more or less depending on the pitch. Now let's take the F on top of the staff. And when we play that stopped, it's going to be open on the F side, which is the F side combination for the note E. <laughs> Now echo horn, we are going to use a valve combination for F sharp, the note one chromatic step higher. My stop hand position is here. For echo horn, fingers come out ever so slightly. And you can hear the sound is a lot more sweet and gentle than the fully stopped sound. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you learned something new, please leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see me cover next. If you haven't already, definitely go ahead and subscribe and click that bell for notifications when I release new videos. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.